The bomb bay doors open silently over black terrain. In the glow of the cockpit display, the pilot's voice stayed even. Target confirmed. Laser locked. Four minutes from now, a hardened nuclear command bunker buried beneath reinforced concrete would cease to exist. On enemy radar, there was nothing. No blip, no trace, only the faint hum of confusion. In underground control rooms, operators adjusted their scopes, unaware that their most secure installation had already been marked for destruction. The F-117 Nighthawk, the world's first operational stealth jet, had entered its most critical mission, a single aircraft assigned to erase an unreachable target without ever being seen. The story began in the late Cold War, when superpowers were locked in a contest of detection versus evasion. Radar networks blanketed continents, and every bomber or missile had a signature that could be tracked. The United States needed an aircraft that could pass through those networks unseen. Deep inside Lockheed's Skunk Works, engineers launched a secret project known as Have Blue. Its mission was radical. Use science to make a plane invisible to radar. They discovered that radar didn't bounce predictably from flat angles. By shaping a surface into dozens of sharp facets and coating it with radar absorbent materials, reflections scattered instead of returning to the source. Add internal weapons bays and carefully shielded engine inlets and the aircraft's radar cross-section would shrink to the size of a marble. The design looked unnatural, more geometry than airplane. But it worked. Because its shape made it aerodynamically unstable, flight control computers were essential. Four independent fly-by-wire systems kept it airborne, adjusting surfaces hundreds of times per second. The Nighthawk didn't rely on speed or agility. Its defense was invisibility. It flew alone, at night, guided by precise coordinates and pilots trained to manage every calculation manually, without radar or support. The pilots who flew it described missions unlike any other, solo flights in total darkness, trusting computers and instinct, never knowing if the enemy's radar had evolved enough to detect them. Each operation demanded absolute discipline, because once exposed, there was no backup. The upcoming strike would be the ultimate test. The target lay beneath reinforced concrete, immune to conventional bombing. Stealth would get the jet there, but precision would have to finish the job. But stealth alone wasn't enough. The mission demanded extraordinary precision. Mission planning had begun weeks earlier. Satellite imagery revealed the coordinates of a fortified command bunker part of a network controlling nuclear assets deep within hostile territory. Conventional bombers couldn't reach it without alerting defenses. The bunker's position and depth made it practically invulnerable to standard ordnance. Pentagon analysts concluded that only a stealth attack could succeed, and only one aircraft could deliver it. Intelligence teams built a digital model of the site mapping air defenses, radar emitters, and topography. The Nighthawk's onboard computer received data points refined by CIA and reconnaissance satellites. Every angle of the approach, every altitude change, was pre-programmed to minimize detection. The chosen pilot, known later only by call sign, spent days rehearsing the flight path in a simulator that reproduced every antenna sweep and infrared threat in real time. Takeoff came under moonless skies from a forward airbase. No external lights, no radio transmissions, everything silent. The aircraft climbed to cruising altitude and then dropped low, following valleys and terrain contours guided solely by its inertial navigation system and onboard terrain data. It didn't rely on GPS, this was pure dead reckoning corrected by program checkpoints. Ground radar made its usual sweeps, but found only empty air. Enemy defenses were already tense. Earlier in the night, other Allied aircraft had struck targets hundreds of miles away, triggering the alert network. But none of those jets had come close to this sector. Somewhere on the radar screen, operators noticed faint interference, just atmospheric noise, they thought. Meanwhile, above them, the faceted black shape of the F-117 glided silently toward coordinates that had never been approached. Inside the cockpit, dim green and amber lights illuminated critical readings, altitude steady, airspeed precise. The pilot's breathing was slow, controlled. Every movement of the stick rerouted through computers, adjusting control surfaces to maintain stability. The aircraft's shape deflected radar, its surface coatings absorbed what remained. As it approached the release point, the pilot armed the weapon, a single GBU-27 laser-guided bomb. This bomb had been engineered specifically for stealth bays and deep penetration strikes. Unlike standard models, 
Its casing was hardened, and its fins designed to deploy smoothly from within the internal compartment. The onboard laser designator would paint a single point on the target, invisible to the naked eye, but perfectly seen by the bomb's seeker head. Accuracy within a few feet. At four minutes to impact, the Nighthawk descended through thin haze toward the target zone. The laser engaged. On scopes below ground, still nothing. At three minutes, the aircraft released its payload. The bomb dropped silently, fins deploying into smooth rotation. The pilot immediately banked away on a pre-planned exit vector, shutting off the laser seconds before impact to break any traceable beam path. Two minutes later, the bomb struck the outer layer of reinforced concrete. Its delayed fuse detonated milliseconds after penetration, sending shockwaves through the bunker's internal structure. Inside command tunnels, lights flickered and consoles shattered. One of the thick blast doors twisted out of alignment. Subsystems failed instantly. Communications with linked command centers cut off mid-transmission. Operators above ground saw nothing, just a brief tremor beneath their feet, followed by rising smoke from ventilation shafts. The pilot never looked back. Climbing through dark airspace, he followed the programmed escape corridor, staying below radar sweep angles until well beyond the frontier. Fuel was calculated to the leader. Every deviation mattered. Within 10 minutes of release, the Nighthawk was invisible again, masked by distance and silence. In monitoring centers across the border, confusion spread. Analysts stared at static imagery from thermal and radar sensors. No aircraft signatures, no warning alarms. Yet contact with the nuclear bunker had vanished. Intercept crews scrambled too late. By the time fighters reached altitude, the intruder was already returning home. At mission debrief, surveillance confirmed total destruction of the facility. Photographic evidence showed collapsed sections where reinforced concrete had given way to internal explosions. The strike had taken exactly four minutes from Bombay opening to impact, four minutes that redefined modern air warfare. By sunrise, only a smoking crater marked the site, but the real shock came next. When intelligence analysts reviewed the satellite imagery the following day, they were stunned by what they saw. The bunker, believed to be impregnable, had been destroyed without any sign of intrusion. No incoming aircraft tracks, no radar footprints, no intercept trails. On every instrument designed to detect a threat, there was nothing. Yet an entire command center, supposedly safe beneath meters of concrete and soil, had simply vanished from the map. For adversaries, this was an unsettling revelation. Generations of defenses had relied on radar as the ultimate shield. Every anti-aircraft doctrine, every early warning network, had been engineered to spot and counter intrusions before they struck. The F-117 proved that radar supremacy was no longer absolute. Every investment in surface-to-air systems, ground alert stations, and layered detection grids had just been outmaneuvered by invisibility. Within defense ministries across the world, urgent meetings followed. Advisors replayed events, but found no data to reconstruct the strike. Theories spread, some believed a new satellite weapon had been tested. Others claimed experimental drones had carried out the hit. Only later did they realize that a manned aircraft had crossed fortified airspace, destroyed a nuclear command post, and escaped unseen. For the United States, the implications were enormous. The Nighthawk's success proved that stealth wasn't a laboratory experiment or a radar anomaly. It was a battlefield advantage. In a single mission, the aircraft validated years of secret research at Lockheed Skunk Works and justified billions in defense investment. Precision had replaced volume. One aircraft, one pilot, one bomb, executing what once required entire bomber wings. Military strategists understood what this meant. Air power had entered a new dimension. If detection could be defeated, the traditional balance between offense and defense collapsed. Surface-to-air missile networks, no matter how advanced, could no longer guarantee protection. The new race wouldn't be about speed or altitude, but about signature, how invisible an aircraft could become. In response, stealth research accelerated worldwide. European and Soviet engineers began exploring ways to counteract radar evasion with low-frequency systems and infrared sensors. Later, those efforts would evolve into competing stealth projects in Russia and China. But in the 1980s and 1990s, the United States held unmatched mastery. Lessons from the Nighthawk directly shaped the design of the F-22 Raptor, combining stealth, super cruise, and agility. And later, the multi-role F-35, extending invisibility into everyday operations. Inside the Pentagon, analysts realized that air dominance no longer meant having the biggest bomber 
or the most missiles. It meant having machines that couldn't be seen at all. A paradigm shift had occurred. Invisibility and precision now defined power projection. That four-minute mission demonstrated that a small, quiet aircraft could alter geopolitics more effectively than a thousand loud ones. It marked the transition from industrial warfare, where size and firepower determined strength, to digital warfare, where mathematics, materials, and control software ruled the sky. The Nighthawk didn't rely on brute force. It used probability, geometry, and discipline to make every strike count. By the time its existence was publicly acknowledged, the world had already changed. Air defenses were being redesigned, radar systems recalibrated, and doctrines rewritten to account for threats that couldn't be seen or heard. What had begun as a clandestine project under the Desert Knight ended by rewriting the rules of modern combat. The F-117 didn't just complete one mission, it ushered in an invisible revolution, one that transformed the meaning of air power forever. In four minutes, the idea of radar dominance died. The F-117 strike proved that invisibility could outmatch any fortress, any defense network, any warning system. Its success signaled a new era where stealth and precision overtook mass and momentum as the ultimate tools of warfare. The Nighthawk's legacy lives on in every combat jet that values silence over speed and accuracy over payload. Its geometry reshaped global strategy forcing every nation to rethink what it means to control the skies. If you want to see how the next generation carries that legacy forward, watch our deep dive on the B-21 Raider. Subscribe for more untold stories of the machines that changed modern warfare.